Hi, welcome back. On this episode, we work on the bodywork and the paint and primer of the two rear quarter panels. Don't forget to subscribe, click the notification button. I'm also on Instagram at Cargo Garage. Let's get started. All right, I've started getting some grinding done. I'm starting in the doorway. So I got it all ground off. It has a nice basic shape, a nice clean line all the way down. And then into here, I'm going to wipe it down with wash and wipe to make sure there's no grease or anything. And then I'm going to apply some mar glass. So I'll kind of build it up just a little bit. And on the outside, cause there's a little bit of waves and little dents and that kind of stuff. So I'll build it up with that and then I'll be able to sand it and make sure I keep a nice clean crisp, crisp uh, edge, which will look good. I'm going to come to about here with the mar glass because I still need to finish grinding all of this before I can put any mar glass or body filler on there. All right, I'm going to show you how I mix up my mar glass. Get this container open. One thing I try to do, I, I keep the hardener on the top of the lid. So I never lose it, it's always with the can, which makes it simple. And all I'm using is the uh, mini fiber stuff, we're not building it up that much, so it'll be plenty. So I'll usually take my stir stick, or my putty knife, and I'll just kind of give it a quick little stir. And I usually mix on a clean piece of cardboard, and then you just kind of take it and slop it out. Try not to take too, too much, you don't want to have to do a bunch of standing or waste a bunch. So I'll take one more, and hopefully that's not too much. And then we'll unscrew the top off of this, and then just squeeze in the amount that we think we need. If you put too little, it won't harden, and you'll end up having to scrape it off and starting from scratch. But if you put too much, it will harden really fast, and you'll be rushing to get it done. Now with the hardener in it, I just go and I just work it in. You want to make sure you mix it really good so all of it activates. Alright, I'm going to start applying it on. This is one nice thing about using the piece of cardboard. It gives you a bit of a work surface to carry it on. And then I'm just going to start applying before it hardens up. So I just kind of work it in. I like to use wax paper. And you put wax paper on and you kind of work it in. You kind of get your basic shape. So that, the wax paper you can kind of play with it with your fingers is setting up a little bit too fast I put just a little too much uh, hardener in but that's okay I'll once it hardens up I'll sand down what's there and then I'll reapply where I need it to I'm gonna have to definitely reapply a little bit because I didn't get everywhere that I wanted to get and it's kind of scrambling at the end but that's okay not the end of the world so yeah also when it's starting to harden you can usually feel a little bit of heat when you touch it, so that's also how you know it's starting to adhere. But in this case, it just got really hard. It's uh, already pretty set up, but you can feel the heat in it. So I'm going to clean my stuff up, and then we'll come back to this in a bit. 
the grinding done on this rear quarter panel. It's feeling pretty good. I scuffed it all up. First went over with a wire wheel just to make sure I got any slag or anything off the panel that I might have missed or any other gunk. And then I went on it with the sander with 60 grit just to make it coarse so there'd be something for the Marglass to bite on to. And now I'm going to wipe it down with final wash and that would get any grease or anything off. I'm just using the same stuff I would use right before I spray paint just because I want to get any grease or grime and any dust off so I want to make sure that the mar glass will have a good bite. It is a chemical so always wear gloves you don't want that leaching into your skin and I also I'm going to put my safety glasses on just to protect my eye in case there's any splashing or anything. And then I have two rigs, so I'm going to soak one and then wipe the panel down and while it's still wet I'm going to take the other one and dry it off. Then I'm just going to pick the spot and start wiping it down. And then I'll dry it. Another nice thing with wearing the gloves, any oils or grease or any dirt from your hands can't get on the bare metal. Now let's keep moving along. I'm kind of just using my weld line so I know where I'm covering. Just makes it a little bit easier to keep track of where I've been. So this panel is now wiped down and ready to put the mirror glass on. So normally you would just put it just on a small area. I'm going to go along my welding line and then I know I'm going to have to kind of feather it out. So I'll get it on there and I'll sand it and I'll do another thin coat most likely to uh, make sure it's feathered out and so the panel looks nice and smooth in the way it's supposed to. And if there's any tiny dents or anything that I missed, it will fill it in and it'll look awesome. Alright, I got the mark glass mixed up and I'm going to start applying it. I'm just going to work it in. And that's going to be all of it. Once it dries, I'll be able to sand it and then reapply where I need it. I know I need more up here. There's a couple of spots that I don't have a nice uniform edge, edge that I want to get. And I need a little more up here too. So, but probably a few more applications and then we should have this looking pretty good. And then we can move on to the other side. Alright, I'm going to start sanding the mar glass off of here. I know there are some spots that are still a little bit low in places that are going to need more. And there's other spots that are way too high. So I'm going to sand it down and use 60 grit sandpaper to bring it flush where it's good. And then I'll reapply where I need to and I'll Keep going and working on the, on the bad areas. When you do it, you should always wear a respirator. And I'm just going to use my air sander. It does a nice job. And I'm going to start with that.
And when you are going along, you don't want to hold it in one spot because it will make damage. You always want to keep the sander moving if you're using it, any type of power sander. It's a lot more crucial if there's paint on it. If you're just kind of sanding somewhere there's paint just so that the new paint will re-stick. If you hold it in one spot, you'll see that in your finished product after. So always keep the sander moving. All right, that's all the marglassing done. I added quite a bit more to really feather it out to get it nice and smooth. There's still a little bit of waves in it, so I'm going to switch to the Bondo now. I'm going to do a whole skim coat over everything and then I'm going to block sand it to get it to that nice mirror image smooth. It'll be pretty good. I'll take out any little imperfections. The Bondo is softer than the mire glass. So the high spots of the Bondo will sand off and then when it hits the uh, mire glass it won't keep sanding through as easily. Which will make it easier for me to get this whole panel perfectly smooth the way I want it. So I'm going to go mix up some Bondo and we'll go from there. Alright, I'm going to open up the Bondo and we'll start mixing that up. This is a new can, it needs a bit of a mix. You can tell it's a different color than the Meyer glass. Kind of a uh, brownish greenish color. Or yellowish color there. It will. Uh, Help too to be able to see the different colors when we're sanding through it, which is good. And it's also a lot thinner, you can tell it's a little bit creamier and runnier, which will also make it a lot easier to apply in thin, smooth coats. I'm just going to mix up a little bit at a time. It's just going to take me a few uh, mixes to get that whole panel covered. But this way I won't waste any or put too much on at once and have it go hard before I finish applying it. Usually with a new tube of hardener or two, I like to kind of, I'm just kind of working it, just making sure it's not settled or anything. And then I'll be able to apply that onto it too. And about the same portion as the wire glass. Too much and it hardens too fast. Too little, it won't harden at all. So, but you can usually tell just by looking if you went too much or not enough. And this is a little bit easier to see, it's a lighter color, but we're doing the same thing as before. We're mixing until all of it's the same looking color. If you see any of the blue streaks or anything in it, you know it's not mixed all the way through thoroughly and you need to keep mixing. And I'm not sure if you can tell on camera or not, but it's significantly more runny than the wire glass. Calling that mixed enough. Now we'll go over to the sidekick and we'll start applying. Alright, I'm going to start up here and work my way towards the back. 
And I'm just going to go over the whole panel in a nice thin coat. Definitely a little bit extra work to skin the whole panel, but it does a much nicer job. You will end up having to go back and touch up a few spots here or there, but in my opinion, it's worth the little bit extra work to get that perfect no wave finish. And if you don't get it on perfect with your first coat, that's okay. It's hard to get it perfect. And then if the bondo starts setting up before you're ready for it to set up, then you end up wasting a lot too, so you're better off to get it best you can, but don't waste too, too much time on it just in case it starts setting up. And it's better to go a little bit thinner than too thick, because otherwise if you go too thick, you got to sand it all off, and that's a lot more work. It does sand a lot easier than the green stuff, the mar glass, but it's still more work that none of us want to do. It takes away from getting the project done. And I'm not sure if you can tell, but I mixed up a significantly less amount of the Bondo. And with it being thinner, it goes significantly further. So don't mix up the same amount of this as the mirror glass because you'll end up possibly having too much or it might just set way too fast. Also see a little bit better here too the different colors between the two which helps a lot when you're sanding it'll give you that depth you can tell where your highs and lows are kind of like when you're sanding if your body metal is too high you see the shiny body metal coming out same type of thing To clean my tools up and then I'm going to mix up some more and I can finish off this back section here and I'll also put some up in here so there's a little bit of waviness in that that you can feel it also sometimes things can be right where they should be but yet you're going from the different textures from the mar glass or the bondo to the body metal and it might make it feel like you have a higher or low so sometimes when you get close to where you think it might be perfect it's a good idea to spray a shot of primer, especially if you use spray some build-up primer, and then you can sand it, and if there's any little tiny imperfections, it will take it out, and it will also make everything feel the same on the panel. It's the same texture, so you can kind of feel your hand across it, and you can tell better if there's a higher, low, or a dip or something. So I'm going to clean this up before it gets too hard, and we'll carry on. All right, I got the Bondo spread across this whole panel, and now I'm going to block sand it. So all I'm using is just a regular piece of wood with some 150 grit sandpaper, and I'm just going to make sure I keep the block flat and move and not push too hard. 
just kind of like that. And just try to follow the rolls of the quarter panel. And it should come out pretty good. It'll help smooth out any little imperfections. It's a lot longer surface area than what I was originally using when I was handing the wire glass. So it should do pretty good. And I, I'll probably start with the air one first. It's nice and big to get it really close and then I'll do it by hand for the finishing touches because it gives you a little bit more control and makes it that much better. And even when I'm hand sanding I still use my respirator. So I'm going to get started and hopefully make short work of it. Alright, I got all the bond one that I wanted to get on. The panel's feeling really, really good. It's nice and smooth. There's just a little tiny spot right here that I can feel with my hand when I run it across. And then there's just a little something right around here. So I'm going to switch to putty now. And I'll start applying that. And then there's also a few other spots hard to see. Like a few other spots, like right here, where it's kind of when I smeared the Vondo on, it just wasn't completely flat, it was a bit of a low, but it feels really good. So I don't want to keep sanding and trying to sand that out. So I'm just going to put a little dab of putty over it and then sand it smooth, and it'll keep my shape. And I have a few other spots where it was like that, or there was a little bit of an air pop bubble or something in it. So that's no big deal. I'm going to grab the putty and we'll start applying that. Alright, for putty, I'm just going to use the stuff in the tube. It's already pre-mixed. So it makes it pretty fast and easy to apply. You can also get, get it in the same type of hardeners like the uh, Bondo and Marglass. Where you just put it down on the cardboard, put the hardener in, mix it up and then apply it. I'm not sure which one is really better. This one's kind of more convenient just because you don't have to mix it. So you're never mixing too much or too little. You can get all the spots you want all at the same time. Um, one thing with it, the tube's pretty big. So usually by the time I get halfway or three quarters way through the tube, I don't do this stuff enough and then it ends up parting and I'm throwing away the tube. But the smaller tube is quite a bit smaller and it's just not quite enough. So I usually get the bigger tube and I just use a little applicator. So all you do is take the top off and then put it on. This stuff is red and then you just start filling all your little spots. It's kind of goes like that. It stands out real easy where you put it on so it's red so you, you can't miss it, which is nice. Which also helps when you're sanding it down too. That's all the putty I'm going to put on for now. I know I'm going to be putting more putty on as I go so I don't get all the spots as good as I wanted properly. I always seem to have to sand and put a little bit more in sand. But the putty is softer than the Bondo. So when you do sand, it'll cut the putty down and then it'll cut the uh, into the Bondo. So I'm going to let this stuff dry for a little bit. But as you can see, it already in some spots is dry to the touch. So it doesn't take very long to uh, get back working. About 10-15 minutes and you're able to start sanding it. So we'll carry on. Alright, the putty's set up enough to, dry, to start sanding. 
So I'm going to start going at it. All I'm going to use, I'm just going to do all the sanding on the putty just by hand. I'm going to use my block and I'm just going to go nice and easy. If you push too hard, you might leave little scratch lines in it. And I'm just using 150 right now. It's kind of dull because I was using it on the other stuff, which is okay, so it doesn't, won't cut as hard. And I find going a couple strokes one way on a 45, and then going a couple strokes the other way on a 45 seems to knock it down and get the shape really nice. And you're just going to go a little bit, kind of feel, and then just do whatever feels right. Just kind of like that. You can already see it's trying to get a shape a little bit better. Feels really good. So I'm going to put my respirator on and I'm going to keep going through. I might have to reapply once or twice in a couple spots. But I think we're pretty close and it's almost ready for paint. Alright, I got all the body work done. It's feeling really good. Turned out well. I'm going to start masking it all off. So I can spray a little bit of primer and paint on it. But it turned out excellent. Feels really good. There's nothing wonky really jumping out at me. So, should be pretty awesome. So yeah, I'm going to mask. The whole main reason we mask off it is to keep overspray off of everything. And right now I'm just going to spray some primer and some paint out of a uh, can. I'm not actually going to mix up anything. This, this isn't going to be the final paint job. This is just to seal this off because I use this for plowing in the winter and I don't want to rush doing a paint job on the whole thing so I'm not quite ready yet and I want it to turn out good for the amount of money that paint costs. So I'm just going to seal it so it's protected for the winter for plowing and then uh, in the spring I'm going to sand everything up and start painting. But when I do get to that stage, I have another set of doors I'm going to be putting on here. I'm not going to use these same doors. So my plan is to uh, pull the doors off, pull the front fenders off, and then probably pull the, all the interior back out too so I can get inside the door jams real good so everything's well protected. And then I'll spray all that stuff like in the door jams around the back door, in behind the fenders, and the back side of the fenders, keep them a little better protected. And then I will put the new doors that I have for it on. And once those are on, I'll sand the whole vehicle, and then I will spray a build-up primer on it, and then I'll, I'll block sand the whole vehicle, and I'll take out any little imperfections that I might have missed which would be good. And I'll probably wet sand. Wet sand sanding is really nice. You don't have to wear a mask because there's no uh, dust in the air. And if there is dust, it's not nearly as much. It'd be very, very minimal. But there should be no dust because the water should pull it all right to the ground. So that makes it a lot nicer. You just got to use different sandpaper. But the sandpaper is not that expensive. So it's no big deal. But it does definitely a nice job. And then one nice thing too, when you wet sand, when the light shimmers, you can see if there's any any waves that you missed, and then you can do a little bit of putty or spray a little more primer on that one spot and uh, sand it down again and block it. So, yeah, I'm just going to keep masking away. I'm just going to use the newspaper. Nothing too fancy or high tech here. I 
another thing too with body work when you're sanding and getting everything prepped for paint the harder a spot is to sand usually the more important it is because if you end up skipping over it that's usually where your paint will start to lift or peel or start rusting first so even the hard spots to get to you want to make sure you get to them as it will show later Alright, that's all the masking I'm going to do. I didn't sand this area down or anything either just because this, this is just to really seal the primer. I'm going to prep it all in the spring when I go to paint the whole thing. So, But if you are going to paint your whole vehicle after you do the body work, spray a build up primer on, wash sand it. If you wet sand that's even better, it's a little bit nicer. And then Put your final paint on. So, but this is just to tie it over to the spring so I can use it for snow plowing. And then I'll do a video in the spring on doing a complete paint job on this. So, it's just a temporary deal. Alright, I'm going to give the panel a final wipe down with some final wash. So, I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to put some of the liquid on. One rag, I'm going to use the other rag to dry it off immediately. And I'm wearing gloves because we don't want to get the chemicals to soak into our skin. It's not very good for us. So you just kind of pick a spot and then just kind of give it a quick wipe down. Try to remember where you went and dry it off immediately. And it'll take any of the, any dust or grease off so you don't get any fish eyes and You'll get all the dust out of it so you don't have a, any type of texture or anything to your paint job. It's going to get a little bit dry, so I'm going to add a little bit more juice to the mix. One other thing I'd like to say too, when you're doing your uh, body work, anything that you see or feel will uh, show up in your final uh, coat. So you want to make sure that you have everything good. Because if you can see it or feel it, it will show in your final paint job. It's also not a bad idea to clean all your rigs. Like, if you think you're going to need, however many rigs you think you're going to need, just take them and put them through the wash. And then you know that they'll be as clean as possible with those contaminants. Alright, everything's wiped down. I'm just going to get my paint and primer ready. And then I'll spray it on. Alright, I'm going to start spraying primer. I'm going to spray it with a spray bomb. So one thing you always do before you start spraying just uh, pick a spot that's not anything important, like a piece of paper or whatever, and just make sure that it's spraying okay, that's not going to glob and give you a bunch of runs or anything. So I'm going to put a respirator on, don't really be able to talk much while I'm doing this. And I'm also going to probably end up moving the light around as I go, so it may blind the camera out, we'll, we'll find out, but I need good lighting to see.
All right, when you're done spraying, you turn your can upside down, and then you hold it till it comes out clear, and that will clear any paint in the tips. When you go to use it the next time, it will work good. So it looks like it's uh, pretty good, actually. There's nothing really jumping out that much or anything. It looks pretty good. There's a couple little, little tiny spots that next year when I go and spray it with the Build-Up Primer, and it'll sand out and it'll be perfect, which would be nice. And then the, the spot for the putty is you can really see it sucking into the primer. That's why I get a little bit extra. Normally I would do two coats of primer and then two coats of paint. But right now, since I'm just using this stuff, I'm just going to do one coat of primer, one coat of paint, and then I'm going to call it good till the spring when I do an actual paint job on it. But I'm quite happy. It looks pretty good. We'll let that dry and then we'll start spraying some paint. All right, primer's dry. We're going to start shooting paint. I'm just using this spray bomb. Nothing special. Pretty good actually. I'm pretty happy. Now it's protected for the winter for snow plowing. I just need to get the other side done. But it looks pretty good. Alright, I got all the grinding done on the passenger side. I'm getting ready to wipe it down. It looks pretty good. I need a little bit of margoss, a little bit more in some places, but for the most part it's not bad. I'm running out of time this year before snowplow season, so in the spring, I still need to cut out this spot right here and replace it, and I'm going to do here, so we will see that in the spring. But I'm just going to use my final wash here and wipe it down, get all the uh, grease off of it and all the dust. I already blew it off with there, so I'm just going to start doing my wipe down. up some mud glass and I can start applying. I'm going to do the same thing as the other side. I'm going to do the seam in here and the seam here. I'm going to hit those first and then I'm going to have to I'll sand them down and then I'll put more material on but it'll help get the shape and I'll ensure that I'm getting a good bond right in the seam and I'm not putting on too thick at first. I'm having to do a lot of extra sanding afterwards. So I'm going to go mix that up and then we'll start applying.
All right, I just want to show how I clean my tools. I just put another coat of Margloss on. So first thing I do with the putty knife, I just try to scrape it all off. Right off I do it, if you let it sit and harden, then it's a lot more work. You can see it's kind of coming off. And then I just kind of throw it on the floor or on the gar in the garbage. And also, if, if you mixed up too much putty, you're better off to throw it in the garbage than applying it on if you have nowhere to put it because you're just going to end up sanding it off after and it'll make more work. And then my piece of cardboard, I just kind of scrape whatever I can off. And as I get stuff, I just go with the other putty knife and scrape it off and throw it on the ground. So, this way you can reuse the same piece of cardboard for a long time. We just get that film on there. It works really good for mixing. So that's pretty good. And then I usually just use an old piece of sandpaper and just kind of sand whatever doesn't scrape off. There's that little film. And I just sand that off of sandpaper. And it's just a wore out piece from my sander. And as you can see, they're nice and clean and they're ready for the next time. You always want to clean them up right when you finish while well, the putty and that will be softer and then also the next time you want to mix stuff up all your stuff's ready to go and it's just a bit of a time saver alright so I got the mark glass on it's actually uh, hardened now you might be wondering why I put the wax paper on here it's so you can kinda get it on you can kinda work it in where you want to get it to it also doesn't stick to the putty knife if you're running the putty knife along to try to help spread it out the way you want it. And then once it's hardened, you're able to just pull it right off, which works out pretty good. And now this is hard and ready to go to start sanding. If you're ever not sure if it's hard enough or not, just take your fingernails and kind of go like that across it. And if it scuffs it up a little bit, it's just getting hard enough and it doesn't leave any marks at all, then it's uh, good to go and be able to start sanding. Over here, I can tell it's still a little bit tacky, so I'm going to let it sit a little bit longer. But it's ready to start sanding in a few more minutes. All right, I got the passenger side all prepped for uh, paint. I've already wiped it down with final wash. I got everything masked that needs to be masked. It, it feels pretty good. There's a couple spots straight in here, but I'm at that point where I fixed one spot, but then when I'm sanding, I'm getting to another spot. So the best thing to do if you're in that situation is to spray primer over it. it it'll seal everything off, and then you can block sand it. And if your little imperfections still come out, then you can put more putty on and then when you sand the putty you're not getting into the other soft putty the primer will help keep you from getting into anything that you've already got perfect um, I didn't do anything up here because I have some rust holes right here I need to take care of and this is pretty pitted so I think I'm going to cut that out but that's going to be in the spring so I'll show you what it looks like there it's Definitely no good, but I just don't have time this year to deal with it. You can kind of see it's a hole right through. So I'm going to cut probably from here all the way to here off. And I'm going to try, try to stay below this lip, but good chance I'll end up coming probably above up to there so it's easier to work with. And then once I do that, I will finish the rest of the body work in that area and then it'll be ready for final paint. So I'm gonna start spraying, and we'll see how it turns out.
All right, that's one coat. I'm just gonna do one coat of primer since it's just getting me by, and then I'm gonna do one coat of paint once this is dry. All right, we're gonna start spraying the paint. All right, it's all painted. We're gonna let that dry and we can take the paper and everything off later and be able to check and see how it turned out. Awesome. All right, that's the rear quarter panel, all painted and dried. It turned out very nice. Looks good. It's, uh, it's been a while since I filmed the video. I got my chains on and I got the uh, snow plow on. But it came together really nice. I'm quite happy with it. Looks good from the back end too. Everything looks nice and proportional. I still need to do a rear bumper on it, but that would be probably more so in the spring. But the other side, it looks awesome as well. So it's coming along quite nicely. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification button. See you next time.